Hey everybody, glad to see y'all again. This is Dimple welcoming y'all back to my tutorials on Android Framework Component Part 7. In this tutorial, we will go through Android Content Provider Framework. Content Provider again includes many concepts, so I will be extending this tutorial to the next part also. So let's get started without much delay. So, what is Content Provider? Content Provider supplies data from one application to other on request. So it acts as a medium where data is passed between two applications on request. Such requests are handled by the methods of content resolver class. So content provider can use different ways to store its data. It can store data in the form of a database or it can store data in a file or even it can store data over a network. And in Android, most of the content providers are defined under android.provider package. Okay, let me make it more clear with an example. So in this particular slide, we are seeing two different applications. One is your contact app and one is your WhatsApp. So imagine a scenario where you want to send a contact from your contact app to one of your friend on WhatsApp. So using Content Resolver, we request the data to the contact app. So the request is going from your application to your, to your application one. We will see more about Content Resolver in the next slide. So for now, um, whatever data you request that data is provided or data response is provided through content provider in the form of a cursor back to your requested application. So one thing to remember is content resolver is used to request the data and content provider is always used to provide the requested data. Now, what is Content Resolver and Content Provider? When you want to access data in Content Provider, we always use Content Resolver object. So Content Resolver communicates with the Provider object, Content Provider object. So this Content Provider object is nothing but it is just an instance of a class that implements Content Provider. So to get an instance of Content Resolver, we always use get content resolver function and content resolver has responsibility of this CRUD operation, CRUD operation. So what is this CRUD? So content resolver is used to create, retrieve, update or delete the database. So this operation is done with content resolver. And common pattern to access content provider from your UI uses cursor loader to run an asynchronous query in background. So to access the content provider, we always use cursor loader. Cursor loader which will run in background and provide the result back to the activity through UI. So the activity or fragment in your UI called a cursor loader to query which in turn gets the content provider using content resolver. So this cursor loader is responsible for putting back the result in your activity or fragment. Now we'll see what is URI. Content URI is used to identify data in the content provider. To actually hit correct content provider, we use uniform resource identifier, which is unique to every content provider. So there may be many different content providers within one application. To uniquely identify each of the content provider, we use URI. So this is the format of the URI where prefix is nothing but it is always set to the keyword called content in this case and authority is nothing but the name of the um, content provider uh, for example it can be a contact it can be browser or gallery so that particular name is nothing but its authority and data type is the data type of the content 
provider and id is the specific record which you have requested for now what is the format of a query we always communicate with content provider or we request data from the content provider in the form of a query so this query is nothing but it is almost same as an sql query this query function has different parameters where uri is your table name projection acts as the columns of the particular table selection acts as a specific rows for example it is equivalent to where clause in your sql and the selection arcs is equivalent to group by having clause in your sql sort order if you want your data or result to be in ascending order or descending order that time you can specify as this sort order parameter so this is the query we pass this query to the content provider and the result is returned back to your application through ui implementing content provider class the content provider instance manages access to structured set of data by handling requests from other applications so if this is your application all your implementation will be coming in this particular portion where you can communicate with other application as well as your data storage so you have to implement your content provider in such a way that it can communicate both with other applications as well as data storage now all there are some required methods and those methods will be falling in this particular region they are nothing but these are the required methods so on create on create is is used to initialize your provider android system will call this method immediately after it creates your content provider so content provider is not created until content resolver object will try to access it so until there is some object which will try to access your provider provider is not created then query is the function used to retrieve data from your provider and query will return the data as a cursor object so all your result will be present in the cursor object and insert insert is used to insert a new row and it will return the content uri for the newly inserted row so it will return the uri for the newly inserted row update is again used to update your database this will return the number of rows updated delete is used to delete a particular row or a column and again it will return the number of rows deleted get type function is used to return the mime type for the corresponding content uri there are some advantages of content provider content providers offer granular control over permissions for accessing data for example you can choose to restrict access to a content provider within your application or you can provide full access to the content provider if your application um might store structured records in sqlite database as well as video and audio files so your app is storing data in database and some video files audio files everywhere it's storing data so you can use content provider to access all of this data at once and one more advantage is cursor loader objects rely on content provider to run asynchronous queries and then return the result to the ui layer in your application so these were some of the concepts on content provider in next tutorial we will see what is sqlite database along with an example thanks for watching please stay tuned in with my next tutorials bye